Hello everybody, it's a City Met Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the VK16801P. This is a tier 8 premium tank that was added to the game. I don't even know how long ago, it's been quite some time. But, in, in my opinion, it still holds up extremely well. Now, jumping over, let's take a look at the statistics. So, if you want to get your hands on this tank, it's going to cost you 11,500 gold. So, about 50 bucks, kind of expensive a little pricey but you know what i don't recommend buying it outright the only time i play my vk is when it's plus one minus one and that is the only time i play my vk occasionally i will take it out in regular matchmaking during regular matchmaking so without the plus one minus one but whenever you end up against tier tens inside this tank i find it just gets decimated a lot. So starting off, we have 220 base penetration, 216, 260, not 16, 260, APCR penetration. So you have AP standards and APCR. The high explosives on this with the 65 millimeters of pin, that's actually a lot of penetration on those high explosives. Along with that, this tank weighs a crap load. I wish that they would add this into here so we can see how much it weighs. We'll take a look over at that and Thanks, GG, here in a second. Still concealment. Yeah, we're not even going to look at that. Hit points, 1,700. Quite a bit for a tier 8. Max speed of 20. Oh, yeah, you're you're definitely going to be first one in, first one out. Just kidding. You're going to be last one in and probably even last one out. This VK, heavily armored, absolute monster of a tank. Top speed, we already went over that. Reverse speed of 15, you're definitely going to be filling that. That's going to be helping you out a crap ton. Fire percent chance. 15. A lot of tanks out there have got a 20% fire chance, so 15. You probably do not need preventive maintenance on this tank. Ugh. So the 15 second reload, you can get this down to about 11 second reload. I don't know why doing one does it all, but it, it is what it is. So 2.7 aim time, 50 rounds, accuracy 0.4. Um, don't worry about the accuracy, you're going to be doing this mostly close quarters to begin with. Gun depression of 8 degrees is not too bad either. Gun elevation, you're going to be feeling that a lot. It's going to be helping out if you have to aim up higher. It's just overall super solid tank. Uh, traverse speed, well, terrain resistance and traverse speed. Not exactly the greatest. So your turret traverse 15, and then you have track traverse of 18. Your armor 230, 160, 100. So it doesn't look too bad. Jumping over to the uh, armor models here, let's go ahead and take a look. So, side scraping, a lot of auto ricochet, plus there's a lot of spaced armor on this side. So, just know that. Your side here, it's only 130, there is no spaced armor there. It's All your spaced armor is down low. 40 millimeters on the tracks. And then you do have a little bit of an overextension for the armor on the side to help out with the tracks down below. Because the inside is only 60 millimeters thick, so... It, it, it auto ricochets as long as you're at the right angles, but with all the spaced armor in the way, it's going to be extremely difficult to go through that. 130 on the side, 160 on the side of the turret, up in the front, 230. And keep in mind, this is a box turret. So when playing a box turret, if you are playing aggressive against somebody and you're driving at a slight angle, this angle, you know, just increase it a little bit. Get that turret a little bit more increased. Along with that, if they're loading the APCR, they're loading the premium. This is over 260. It's APCR. It's not heat rounds. So up near the front here, a heat round with over 270 or even 280 is going to go right through it. The hatch is a very extreme potential weak spot. Your machine gun port, lower plate. But, you know, if you're popping out like that, you're doing it wrong. This tank is meant to be side scraping goodness and heavy assaults pushing the front line using the 1800 hit points that you have as much as you can to get up close. So let's go ahead and jump right into the replay. After the replay, we're going to be going over the perks and everything else that I have on this tank. Now it's on cliff and this match we were playing with blade and Toto. So blade and Toto, I got to say probably some of my favorite chops to play with. I absolutely enjoy playing with them. Now, the VK, you know, it, th there's moments you got to be a little bit aggressive. You want to try and get into those positions as you can, as early as you can, or even if you're required to, late game. But if you do manage to get to them, it, it's going to be an absolute 
tremendous help. So, as I'm transferring over my screen real quick, so I get a better view myself. The center on cliff, this is a very strong position to put up, push up to, especially since it's in counter battle. Now, the VK, it's not meant to roam the map. It's not meant to go around and try its best to take on everybody. And, you know, you, you don't want to be mobile. You want to pick a position that you can get to and you know that you can hold it. So right here, we're angling the turret. We're trying to keep angles. We're readjusting, getting ready to take a shot. We do a snapshot, but we messed up and we bounced. Now, as we're pulling out, we're already up to 13, 19 blocks. So 1,300. And as we're pulling up a little bit further, if you look behind us, Blade decided to take a hard left to pull in a little bit more. I'm trying my best to help him out, understanding how the armor works in this tank, but... Well, you'll see in a second what happened with Blade. He's in pain. <laughs> but Blade is an extremely good player. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't replace him for anybody else. I've been playing with him for years. Now, the 1375 coming up behind, getting taken down by the STA-1 on top of the hill. So we have hill support, and then we have heavy armor coming down. I do come out and get a shot into the Bone Shaker. Two ricochets, jumping up to 2,475. Along with that, we've done 855 damage so far, utilizing the armor as much as we can, and a shot that either went through the hatch or was shot straight into our front plate. Popping around to take a look, possibly through the gun mantle with an AP round, which does happen quite a bit. Now, the VK... Getting into those strong positions, once you're inside those strong positions, you now want to hold. You want them to come to you. You want them to turn the corner. You want to have full control. The more that we pulled out, the more problems we had because people were starting to aim for the hatch. There was a lot of guns on us. We, we want to try and limit the amount of guns that are on us. So now we're going to utilize the eight degrees of gun depression that the VK has backing up a little bit. Toto's on our rear. He's taking care of the IS-6, putting a little bit of damage into him. We try, we put a shot into him, we try going for the ram, but we're a little too slow. Now that the IS-6 is down, it's time for us to slap on reverse and get back up on top of the hill. Blade's down low, trying to defend his lower plate, but his hatch was exposed and he wasn't angling his turret a little bit. So he was taken out. Along with that, Toto is still up, but he is a little beat up. Now, it is 10 to 9. It's still looking like an extremely good match. We're at 1,402 assisted, 1,281 dealt, and along with that, another 386, bringing us up to 1,667. T28 coming around. Keep in mind, I am loading premium, and that's because we talked about it at the very start of the match. We wanted to make sure that when we pulled around that corner, we did not want anyone else to be aggressive against us. We wanted to take full control of this position. Angling the turret against the fatherland, so to help guarantee the ricochet, you know, giving a little bit of an angle just to make the armor thicker, bringing it up to that 270 millimeters thickness so you can get it up to on that angle, and the auto ricochet on the left side. Repeating the process again, he was trying to aim at the hatch, but as I said, used a gun depression to help cover the hatch as well, angled the armor to get it to the thickest. So Toto was taken down, and now it's us against a fatherland. So we're going to use the weight of our tank against this fatherland. We're going to back up. We're going to put a shot in. We're going to angle the turret, angle the lower plate, cause them to bounce. Then, now that we got some distance, we're coming back down. And we're going to do another ram. Because of the way that this tank is, it weighs a lot. It's going to hurt when it hits. And the fatherland, well, overmatch. Up in the top there, it's only 30 millimeters on the Fatherland and the IS-3A, so the 128 millimeter can rip right through that. And for how tall the VK is, it has no problem ripping through it. You know, that's probably one of the best things about this tank is how it's able to brawl so well. It gets up close, you can find those overmatch points, and you can take down multiple people. So far, we're just protecting the encounter. We're watching our right, we're watching our left. We have one to tank destroyer off in the distance. The rest of our team is on the far left. Ricochet a shell from the T-54E2 and shut him down. I do feel a little bit bad of 
how many shots I fired that were premium, but we wanted the extra shell velocity. Speaking of which, I forgot to mention the shell velocity. I do believe that the APCR of the VK have about a 1,100 or maybe 1,075, but I, I think that the standard rounds only have a shell velocity of 900 or so. So real fast. Standard shell velocity, 810. Oh, that's even worse than what I thought. Premium rounds, 1,013 for any of those, for you guys who wanted to know about that. And pushing in, we had a ram on the side of the bone shaker. We wanted to save our shell and not fire. But you know what? He was taken out without a problem. And taking over the center of the map, utilizing our armor to the best of our ability, gave us 5,204 ricocheted, 4,200 dealt with 1,700 assisted. So, combine the damage, it's going to be around 6,000 total combined. Honestly, not a bad match at all. Probably one of the best matches I've had inside this tank. That also includes me using the armor as much as I can. So, with the amount that we ricocheted, we pretty much defended ourselves three times over with our hit points, not including the shells that were absorbed into the tracks that do not register as ricochet damage. So here, I'm just trying to sit on the cap, see if he wants to pull out, try to take a shot, but it's four to one. He's definitely not going to be coming at us. So, just wait it out. You know, get a little bit impatient, decide to push up. We got the hit points to push up, and if our team doesn't want to make a push, and they don't feel like they want to make a push, we do have a tank destroyer that was heading down to the H line, J line, coming up the backside. So rather than that, I knew I had the armor and I knew I had the hit points, so why not push in? Get a little bit of assistance from a light tank or the tank destroyer, either one, perfectly fine. But, solid match. An absolutely solid match. Now, talking about the VK, how I feel it does inside the matchmaking. This tank is not one you buy to be competitive. This tank is a tank you buy because it sounded fun. Or you wanted to be an absolute nerd. So don't worry about it. It, it is what it is. It is a solid tank. Now, going over the perks, we have rapid aim to increase the turret traverse speed because it was 15 degrees. Giving that little bit of an extra traverse speed is going to help out a lot. Six cents, the commander traits and everything else is going to really help out. Six cents, in my opinion, is kind of a mandatory perk. Along with that, we have rapid loading for 10% increase to gun reload speed. Jumping over, we have board and leader, 10% increase to sc skill effectiveness and crew performance. Clutch braking, just to give us the extra rotational speed. Along with that, off-road driving to give us the extra rotational speed as well. You guys probably saw that inside that replay. We utilized everything that we had on this. Situational awareness, track mechanic to get those tracks back up quick, controlled impact so we could get the extra damage out of the ram and not take any damage as well. So if you guys liked it, let me know. Before we jump all the way out, we do have one last thing to take a look at, and that is the overall armor model. 40 millimeters on top, it's going to take a 122 millimeter to overmatch that. 60 millimeters down low, it's going to be auto ricochets. Even if they shoot through the front of the tracks, try to hit it, it's just going to bounce because underneath the tracks there, it's additional space armor. There is nothing there. So it is a little bit trolly. It helps out a lot. 65 millimeters of space armor on the outskirts, jumping over 80 millimeters under the front plate, which means it cannot be overmatched at all. So if you're pulling over a hill, then they try to shoot you down there. They're going to need a heat round in order to go through. 100 millimeters on the rail, rear of the tank, it's going to be extremely hard to pin with high explosives. And looking at the 130 on the sides and the 130 on the lower plate, try and defend the lower plate. 160 on the machine gun port, 150 on the hatch, 160 on the sides, extremely good for side scraping. 180 on the front, jumping over 200, 220, 230, 260 on the lower part of the turret and the little flat visor there in the front so if you guys liked it leave a like comment subscribe um drop comments down i will try my best to reply as much as i can thank you you guys have a wonderful day